Video record. Well, you can begin. Thank you very much there, David. Of course. You can say the second part. David what? David Wentz. David Wentz. All right, my new friend and my audience member, as, as well as my staff audience member, right? Okay. Um, my, name, my name is Jeff Carroll, and um, I'm going to do a real abbreviated version of the monster panel. Um, today's subject is Sword and Soul. And Sword and Soul is the diverse version of Sword and Sorcery, um, subgenre of science fiction, fantasy, speculative fiction, like all of that. So Sword and Soul is, I'm going to, I had the date, but I think it's a little bit older than the first book that defined itself as Sword and Soul. That was published by Milton Davis out of Atlanta, and it was Woman of the Woods, right? And, and that came out, and I think that's the title of it, right? Um, right. That came out about six years ago, and um, might be a little bit more, but I think there were rumors to come up with that term a little bit before that anthology. But that anthology was defining it as a new subgenre. Um, and what that subgenre is, is um, you think of sword and sorcery, which is everything from Dungeons and Dragons yeah. to Lord of the Rings, which is similar, um, to Game of Thrones, yeah. and then include also in that Excalibur, also yeah, included yeah. in that um, Xena the Warrior Princess, yeah. Hercules, yeah. and my favorite, Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> yes. Right. And so when you think of all of those, like um, Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Barbarian sort of travels in the northern Africa, Arabia, right, sort of right, right. Re world. Um, like um, Arabic places. The Arabic places, because he's a Sumerian, right? So that is Greece, Rome, and those areas which are now Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, right. Turkey, like Middle East, probably even Israel, right? In that, and then coming down to the Arabian pen Peninsula. Yep. So that's him. And so when you think of those, even Middle Earth, which is somewhere around that area, uh -huh. um, Game of Thrones, also in like a the Northern Hobbit European Earth, area, yeah, right? So um, you think, you don't think Asian. You don't think African, you don't think Native American or even Latino, right? Uh -huh. You think of purely Greek, Arab, and maybe whatever they want to call it, gypsy, whatever, you know, whichever is in Middle Eastern. But you think of that, right? Now, in Conan, he did come into contact with an Asian, yeah. but it was almost like foreign. But you also understand Asia, Middle East, Europe are all on the same continent. You know, there's no continental divide. Um, and even with Grace Jones and what was it, Will Chamberlain that was in um, Conan the Barbarian, they were anomalies. It was like, right. they didn't come from, they didn't go to, the story wasn't told in a place where they came from. So they were people that had wandered away from their people. So for a black writer, we didn't really fit in into the sword and sorcery container. I don't see us in Game of Thrones. There's nowhere in there that I see room for, you know, a diverse group of people in the great Game of Thrones universe. Or in even in um, The Hobbit, the world of The Hobbit, yeah. the world of Lord of the Rings. I don't necessarily see that. Although you could put people there, I don't see it organically only because the cultures are different. Now, in Game of Thrones, they did have the pyramid culture, right? right, right. And that was a different world and they tried to be diverse. Um, but again, they went back to the stereotype of what? Slavery. Yes. And you're like, ah, oh, come on. I mean, we weren't slaves everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Even the Native Americans, South Americans were never slaves, right? So, and, and the Africans, it wasn't all of them were slaves. It was just the ones that they were able to bring to America and um, some of the ones that were involved in the Egyptian slave trade, but that's yeah. not even half of the continent. 
So more than half of it was never really anything like that. So to categorize it and to define it as that was can be offensive, could probably be, I wouldn't say racist, but definitely culturally ignorant. So um, in response to that, they created something that is more uh, multiculturally friendly, that embraced everything. And I think with the term soul, yeah, you think of soul brother, you know, you think of <laughs> jive talk, but it isn't a race, right? Soul is something that we all have. So when you say sword and soul, that means, okay, this is an inclusive genre. Because who doesn't like Conan the Barbarian, right? Who doesn't like, you know, um, the, the brute force way yes. of solving things? Muscles and brawn, you course. know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing. And, and, you know, um, I don't know if you would consider Conan's world medieval times, because it seems a little bit pre-medieval, right? Yes. If we're looking at every culture and civilization evolving the way European cultures did, which they didn't, you know, because there's no medieval period in, in Native American history, right? There's no medieval period. They didn't have a Bronze Age, you know? We built society around them, and many times they still practice some of the same things they practiced for 500 years ago. Um, African culture didn't necessarily have a bronze period. They have an industrialized period. So that medieval, eh, you know, but it does make good for storytelling, right? right. Especially the barbarian period with, with, with the Conan. So um, this became a more fantastic subgenre than even Sword and Soul because I do believe that Conan is probably a little bit more accurate for that area that it traveled in, the Middle Eastern world, than it is for somewhere else. Was there a big sword running through North America beating people up? Nah, nah I, don't, I don't see that. Because they didn't make weapons of, like swords like that. Um, however, was there a big sword probably in the Middle East? Probably, you know, I don't know. Um, so. When you look at what Sword and Soul is, now you're looking at the stories of African warriors, you're looking at the stories of Native American warriors, you're looking at the story of Aborigines in Australia, and these stories almost feel like the need to highlight real people. So when you read a Sword and Soul story like Amaro, right, which was one of the first Sword and Soul books, but it was really a black, Sword and Sorcery story, but it was not the same as Conan. Sword and Soul has sometimes the limitations of highlighting real battles in African uh, uh, history, like the history of Africa. When you're dealing with the, the, the Mali Empire, the Sungai Empire, the Zulu empires, right? Yeah, these like, things, these, the these cultures, are after the fall of Egypt, but before uh, colonization, okay? Yeah. So if that's a middle time period, that's a beautiful time period to explore. There were great empires, right? Mali, uh, Timbuktu, right? Uh, the Congo. These, yeah. these two are African-American, or even in American, we really don't hear that much about it. When we look at our world history stories, we learn a lot about Greek, learn a little bit about Asian culture, and maybe we heard something about the Mayans, right? Yes. But after that, we don't really touch them. We don't really deal seriously with Native American culture, and that's where we're located. So when it comes to Sword and Soul, they sought to highlight those dark areas, those areas that we really didn't learn much about. And sometimes they're a little bit more historically accurate or have the um, uh, have the, the need to be more accurate because people don't know the story so it's hard to lie and di divert from a story that people don't know yet so because it's new they stick to it a little bit more um, that was one of the things that that I wanted to um, the highlight I am now oh, yes. oh no problem I am beyond just a reader of Sword and Soul. 
I actually penned my first Sword and Soul story. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I called it uh, Planet of Kibolan, right? And as we know, uh, with think John Carter, right? Sword yeah, and Sorcery, yep. Yeah, sword and Sorcery doesn't necessarily have to even be limited to Earth, right? Uh, it can what's be like another, outer space, right? Or post-apocalypse? What's a, a post-apocalyptic sword and sorcery story? Cartoon. Yes. Name it. Yes. Anybody know the name? You heard of Thundar the Barbarian? Yeah, I've heard about that. He had his big white sword. Yeah. Right. His story took place after the fall of Earth after a big nuclear explosion. Of course. But it was still sword and sorcery because who was his adversary? A magician. Yeah. So there you had that. Now, um, I took the liberties in my story to go to another planet because I didn't want to be constrained around telling the story of an African um, empire, right? I um, said that there's some relation to, to the similarities of cultures here on Earth because I figured, all right, you know what? How about Africans behave like Africans? before they got to Earth. How about Europeans behave like Europeans before they got to Earth, right? So now I can do like Star Wars, do a story about other planets of course. before Earth with the similar behaviors and similar characteristics. So that's where my story takes place. Um, what else? Okay. Uh, why do people like sword and soul or sword and sorcery. Let's look at the whole genre. Does it, do anybody want to tell me why? How about you, Dave? Do you, what, is, what is something you like about this genre of sword and sorcery? Well, I guess, um, well, for, for a great, um, well, just let me start by saying that nice intro and all this stuff right there. So oh, yeah. what I kind of like about these kind of magician kind of sorcery ideas, it's kind of like when you have like, like these wizards who are like helpful sometimes, sometimes they can be evil, sometimes they can be good, sometimes. Okay, and I say, I say that it's real, about, about sorcery and wizardry, I say they can trap things just with a step of their fingers or or just a one spell. Like the, the ma imagination of it, yeah, just to be able to, not need an explanation other than magic is able to do it. Yeah. And how about you? Yes. And they do touch a little bit on the sorcery yes. and the mysticism behind it. And I think that's what kind of captures us. It's like, what is their full capacity of power? And what can they do? And uh, with that power, what can they do to us? So for me, it's about kind of like that. And I'm going to go primal <laughs> with my like. Um, I like the imagination and the magic. Um, but I actually like the imagery of it. Yes. There's something, like, when I found my old Conan the Barbarian books, I realized I hadn't even read them, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just liked the pictures. And people love that. There's a way, there's an element of literacy that just involves picture reading. That's right. So for those people who don't read all of the words, don't think you're not reading. Yeah. Especially with a comic book. Sometimes it's like a silent movie. Yeah. You know, so you're supposed to fill in those blanks. And people will tell you, higher level literacy is not just reading the words, it's putting the pictures together and, and, and filling in the blanks. So if you're reading it without words, you're almost at a higher level of literacy in some per se. Well, you said a picture is worth a thousand words. So if you're looking at one picture, then you have yes. a thousand words. <laughs> you know, so I like the imagery, but the imagery was a culmination of the magic the suspended imagination, a giant ass snake. Yes. You know what I'm saying? A three headed whatever, you know, a like cyclops. Like right? These things are the these are the creatures of legend. Right? Yeah. And, and mythology. It, it, right, mythology. And they weren't necessarily um, actual mythology because they yeah. were they were not even real. So you didn't even have to worry about, okay, this is Medusa, and Medusa has this long history, and here comes Ares, and these are facts, blah, 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 you know, they're not real people, but they're factual constraints. Yeah. No, in, in, in Sword and Sorcery, in Sword and Soul, 
you just had a green snake or gold alligator. No explanation. Who made it? The magician. You know? And then you had these little small people that lived somewhere else. You know, you had a land of giants one area, had these small people here, you had these people that lived in the forest, these people that lived up in the mountains, yes. and just put it all together and try to figure out how. So to me, I like that of it. Um, yeah, I like the bravado, the machismo of Conan, but I didn't always need that, right? Like, so for me, I've been, you know, since the quarantine, I've been catching up on Xena the Warrior Princess. Yeah, yeah. I know it sounds silly, but blah, 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 right? Oh, I've been mean, right, right. And and the one thing I do hate. Go ahead. What you gonna say? Uh, I said I've been keeping on Spawn. Okay. Spawn. I mean, you know, his real name is Al Simmons. And that the, and that is that is almost a a, a sword and sword and sorcery thing. Yeah, because, it is um, because he deals with the devil and yeah, he deals with the devil since he got killed for doing lots of nasty thing as a soldier. Mm -hmm. He was following orders. Yeah. He, Went down to hell, he made a deal with the devils, so you can see his wife again. Mm -hmm. And um, let's just say it's the devil stole his memories and tricked him, and he swore revenge. And Very then he similar to Persephone and yeah, mythology. Right, and and I was gonna say they they follow uh, almost. You remember Sinbad? Yeah, yeah right. Sinbad so, sailor. Right, so Sinbad follows a little bit of religious mythology as well. And so, like with Spawn, I see that although it is more Christian mythology than probably Arabian or Greek yeah. mythology, where the other ones are based. And then you also have the Viking mythology right. with Beowulf and some of the other ones that exist up there. But back to uh, what was it, Xena, right? Yeah. So, what I I liked about Xena is I'm not big on machismo for men or even for women. So. The fact that she's not that masculine is good for me because I don't want her to go full masculine because I don't like it. I think it's stupid, right? Even when men get so masculine, they don't think, right? So I like that about her because she's like light Conan, right? She's not full out Conan, but she's light. The only problem, the other problem is in the TV show, she is probably sexually fluid of course. at best, but she still harbors an attraction for men, right. okay? She's not full lesbian, but when you look at the 2020 reboot marketing approach, they make her look like she's all out lesbian. And when I first started re-watching it, I said, was I watching a, a, a lesbian show and didn't know it? I'm like, oh, I'm not opposed to it. I was almost proud of myself for, for doing that, and I was like, damn, let me find out. Yeah. And then when I found out, I went back and watched, she's first thing she's doing is kissing Hercules. Yeah. I was like, well, there you have it. It was a reboot just to commercialize it for today's time, which I don't have no problem, but at the end of the day, create an original gay character. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You don't have to change Captain Kirk, you don't have to change anybody. But anyway, that's a digression, right? So some of the key elements, Right? Since we already went through what we like. Some of the key elements of sword and soul and right. sword and sorcery is, of course, the two things. The sword yep. and the sorcerer. Yeah. Or magic. magic. And if you don't have those two things, you're, you're playing with it. Yes. Right? That's the thing that I, I wonder about like with Spawn is that they go into religion so hard that religion sometimes explains the magic. And what I like about sword and soul and sword and sorcery is that the magic stands alone and stands apart from religion. Like, it's, it's you can fight God right. with the wizard's magic. And that's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Whereas when you look at it through a Christian context, the priest wields the magic yes. of God. And but it's not his magic. It's not his magic. Right. Because that would be like a titan. Right. A titan. Because yeah. a titan rivals a god. Or a god rivals another god. You could say a demigod has enough power to rival that titan or god. Yeah. Because um, you got, say, martial arts and a sword. Right. And you use, and you use that same sword to combine with your martial arts skills. And you use it to, to slay the, the titan or the, or the god. Yes. So... The for me, 
I like the interplay, right, of those elements. It's, it's the fun part of it all, right? Um, and then, are there any other elements in there? Now, yeah. we do know the time period, so they're not driving cars. Now, if you want to do a Highlander type <laughs> story, you got to explain it because when you say sword and soul, sword and sorcery, you're not supposed to be dealing with cars. Yeah, you do like horseback. And right, there horseback. you go. Horseback, donkey, camel. Yeah, <laughs> or coach carriage. Coach carriage, or you're riding a different type of animal. That's right. Right? Like they did in Lord of the Rings. They were riding those nasty, you know, dra not dragon type things, yes. but those, those flying wing things. Yes. It was like dragons. They screamed real loud, or, yeah. the, or they like were riding banshee. those big wolves. Yeah. Remember the wolves? Yeah, banshees. Yeah. So you want to suspend regular reality, yes. you know. So if you do, if you do bring it into the modern world, you gotta have an explanation. Because right. now, do, how do people dress? They don't dress in suit and ties. No, they dress like gowns and all those right. like, um, silks. Yeah. yeah. Animal cloth, loin, yeah. loin cloth, yeah. right? Yeah. So like he man, he wears like a yeah, like a I say tights or something like that. Right, yeah. because if you put him in suits too much, now you're dealing with what Harry Potter. Yes, and that Harry Potter is more paranormal magic, yes. and there's no barbarians in there. There's no sword, no, yes. so sword. you just have the sorcery. Just the sorcery, right? So for sword and sorcery, you gotta look. You gotta look. You gotta go with lawn cloth. The women look real sexy. -ish. Yes. Yeah, you like that element. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah. Um, so, and then you have to have exaggerated animals. Yes. Of course. You can't have natural. You can't have regular animals. Yeah. You gotta have. I mean, you do. You gotta have regular cats, dogs, and horses. Yeah. But then you have to have the extras. Of course. You gotta have some type of cyclops. Yeah. You gotta have that. That's yeah. a stamp. What's what's, the, what's another one? Uh, hydra. Uh, a hydra. Because a hydra is like an unkillable water dragon. Mm -hmm. I know because it has multiple heads. And, well, and, yeah. I mean, and, and even with dragons, you gotta be careful because if you go too dragonish, yeah. they're so dominant, they can change your whole thing. But what is supposed to be able to kill the dragon? So the sword, sword. Like a, because the sword is supposed to be the mightiest thing in it, right? Like, that's what we watch it for. Yeah, like Percy Jackson, like he encountered a high drug before, mm -hmm. but uh, every time he cuts the head, more grows back. But, oh, yeah. but what he does, he uses a magic object, like uh, Medusa's gauge, mm -hmm. because if you look at Medusa's gauge, you just... You get to discern the stone. Yes. Yep, yep. And, and they beat it real good in seven, uh, what was his name? Uh, Sinbad. 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 What was the, the, the Ray Howryhausen one? Oh yeah, that was Perseus. Perseus. Yes. So, so you see that? Yes, on the Poseidon. And what else? So we covered almost all of the key elements. Yeah. Anything else? It can be a man yeah. or woman lead. Yeah. It doesn't have even a child, yes. right? Yes. So there's no you know th thing yeah. rigid on that. Yeah, because well, Poseidon's God of the Seas. Yeah. Yet. Zeus, yeah, he's got the sky. Yeah, mm -hmm. thunder. Thor is got a thunder. In my yeah. And and the other thing we didn't mention, we said the sword, yeah. but is that the only weapon? No. no. Right. What are some of the other weapons in sword and sorcery? You got a, you got a hammer. The big axe. hammer. Yes. Yep. Okay, not axe. no corny Harley Quinn hammer. No. No. This is a real, and not a little hand hammer like Thor. Yeah. These are big battle axe hammers, right? Yes. What other weapons? You got a mace. Mace, Mace, right? Club them. Yeah. What's, What's the one? best one? The oh, the bow and arrow. You gotta have the bow and arrow. Like, right? um, like a sniper. That's the sniper. Yeah. The sniper. The bow and arrow like is you. the sniper of sword and yeah. soul. Archer. 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 What else do they have? What's another? Shields. Um, Shields. 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 Right. Shields. Also, morning stars. Okay, morning stars. So wrap around their legs. Yeah. Um, also, clubs like um. Mace clubs or something like that. Okay, so now we're going over weapons, right? Yeah. And then, and then you really you can imagine any other kind of weapon, right? Yeah. You can have a variety, but weapons are important. Um, they have guns, yeah. but guns are sort of not. You got to play it down a gun because you can't go too far, gun, because then you go yes. cannon, yes. and well, you got to stay away from cannon because what's the strongest weapon in sword and soul? The sword. 
Yes. So you can't. You can go big arrows. You can go the big dragon slaying arrow, oh, but you crossbows. still gotta have yeah, crossbows. crossbows. Yeah. That's another one. The hand crossbow, yeah. right? You can even go little pop out knife like in Assassin's yes. Creed. Yes. You can do that, yeah. but you can't go. You know, six gun. M16, you can't, no, that changes it, you know, changes you can't go Gatlin gun in Sword and Saucer. That's, yes. that's, West, that's on Wild West. Right, that's right. Wild West. So you can't do that. If you do, you got to fully explain it, because then that's you're almost right. going like Ash versus Evil Dead, right. you know what I'm saying? So well, you can't do that. Well, there's this comic there is when Ash um, partnered with, with Xena, mm -hmm. Xena the Warrior, but every time they stop evils, Ash goes back to his own dimension. Right, and he always comes with his chainsaw hand. Yes. But he, you already know that he's going through a time warp or something to get there. So you got to have something to explain it. But naturally, you can't. You can now animals. You always have those different animals. But sometimes you got to look loose dogs, yes. packs of wild animals, like just a wolf. Right, yeah. roaming like roaming. I mean, what's that three-headed dog? Oh, um, Cerberus. Cerberus. Now, one other thing that we also have to mention in this is, um, and I almost forgot it, golly, this is what happens when, when you get my age, right? Yeah. We're dealing with weapons, we also have to deal with like magic and the spells. Right. Spell books. Yeah, yeah how, to, how to cast them too. Right. right. And spell books. Curses. Curses. Yes. The right. spell books, curses. What, what, is, what is a good Conan story without a curse? No, oh, you gotta have a curse. Of course. You gotta have mystic, the books. The books. I mean, you could curse that person to be immortal. Right. Because here's the thing. He will suffer losses. Right. A bunch of losses on the way. Like, he makes a, he makes a friend, he or she dies, and he suffers the loss. And, and when he does, he's trying to kill himself, but he can't. Yes. He can so many times, but um, he's immortal because he's cursed. All right. You so say, you can say that the curse is a blessing. The, the immortal spell is a cursing and a bless. And a bless. All right. Just be careful how you use it. So now we covered a little bit of all of that, and I kind of I'm listening to you all, and I have you know pretty much a lot of the basics. So we are dealing. You know, when people watch this, they'll probably get a full idea of what we're talking about. So now, we pull all of that together. Let's talk about some of the best examples of this stuff and why you like it. Okay? Um, what if I, I, we already talked about Conan a lot, but one of the things I liked about the Conan story is it's the epitome of it. It has all of that, it all fires, and then my favorite, it has the brutal imagery. Yeah. You know, my favorite Conan cover is him standing with the sword dripping in blood, surrounded by zombies. Wow. You the know? Undead. Huh? The undead. The undead. The yeah. undead, right? <laughs> the undead. Um, what's another good uh, example of sword and sorcery, sword and soul? Do you have one? Um, no, I think um, I think that would be about it. So far. Okay. Well, 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 you can summon monsters. Like, so, that's right. some of the monsters, like uh, like minions, so forth. Okay. Like, not the squishy yellow guys. Right. I'm talking about like you can summon like a a wolf man or yeah or. You want to be careful with the vampires because you just like with zombies. You don't want to call them zombies. That's right. You want to call them undead, and then you want to call the vampire what? Like Some a blood taker. A blood drinker, blood letters, yeah. you know, something like that. Because you don't want, again, you go too close to vampires, werewolves, and Frankenstein, now you're into paranormal. Oh, yes. And that's another shelf genre, yeah. so like, uh, it shares. It shares. Like um, Van Helsing, like, he's a monster hunter. Right. But uh, you never see him use a sword and sorcery. Now, my question, right, we're kind of all people of color, yeah. right? I'm not going to say we're all black, but I think we are. Right, yeah. sitting in here, yeah. um, but we haven't really seen this much diversity. No, we haven't. In in sword and soul or sword yeah. and sorcery, sword and soul is the diversity element, but we really haven't seen even that on the big screen. Right, right. Yeah. Um, we really haven't seen many of those books. I read, I've written fifteen books and still haven't written a sword nice. and soul book. Why do you think that is the case? Anybody have an idea? Maybe yeah, because I want to hear your answers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the reason is because sometimes, you know, sometimes I think my mom told me this one time that they say when you usually watch the movie, 
the movie can be much different than the books because there's some changes to it. Okay, that's one thing. What do you think? Well, sometimes when you read the book first, you're, you're just seeing that um, when you get to the end of the part of the book and you go see the movie, and it's like, you know, you just say, hey, I think the movie is nothing better than the book because uh, the book has more, more, more depth to it, I guess. More depth to it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm take y'all to another level, right? Yeah. Um, and frame the question a little better and give you an example, right? Um, we've seen now Black Panther. Yeah. We went through Eddie Murphy's era of films. Yeah. Um, we got tired of the slave movies and we were seeing 50 million black slave movies. We was like, we don't want no more slave movies, right? Yeah. Um, Enough for 12 years of slave. And then we had, you know, uh, Menace to Society, Boys in the Hood, uh, girls, what was it with the um, uh, the Ghost Queen Latifah movie? Yeah. Trip. No, not the comedy. What's the other one? Uh, when, when when her and Jada Pinkett. Was the no, when they when they were the, the, the criminals. Oh, I think that was like um, the heist film. Right, something like that. Right, we've seen those type of stories, but we've never seen a black sword and soul story. Yeah, on the movie. Why do you think that? I mean, for me, I can say two reasons, right? And this is, none of them are factual, right? Yeah. I can say, maybe they don't think it'll sell, okay? Yeah. Maybe they don't think it'll sell, but I think, you know, having The Rock play the, right. the, the, um, the uh, uh, Scorpion King, yeah. Yeah. that was sword and soul, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I just think, one, they may not know the stories that exist within Middle Africa, right? In that period of the fall of Egypt to the first uh, slave ship arriving. Yeah. They may not know empire stories. Yeah. Or then like for me, for many times, I used to not want to see those stories because I was like, I don't want to see African people having to behave like how I imagine European empires yes. behaving just to sell, right? Yeah, just a to story. A, yeah, right? just to their fans and everything. Right, because the the African warrior stories that I've read were not ignorant Conans. Right. You understand what I'm saying? They weren't enslaved, looking for revenge for the people that enslaved them. It wasn't dark magic looming, trying to kill the world. And I think part of it is we know so little about African history that any image that gets put out there can then become the image yes. of, of Africa. Yes. So like if we were to put out a black Conan story, that might confirm to the world what they've been saying about Africa already. Yes. Like, you know, because Africa was already being taught. It's the jungle, it's dark man, they're cannibals. So, all of the things that you might want to put in a <laughs> in a sword and soul story, you then you're gonna be proving them right, you yeah. know. So you're like, yeah, I can't put none of that in there, you kind know. Kind of being politically correct, right? Yeah. You know, you don't want to. So I think a lot of that, you know, has 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 happened. Now yeah. there have been stories written in books, and for me, I used to think, oh my God, it's nothing but a black on black violence. <laughs> you know, because then you don't want to have uh, the, them fighting white people in every story, because that seems too cliche. Yeah, so you want to do that. And so I think what I've read was that they've gone a little bit more human um, in their battles, right? A lot of African stories you'll see, it's two brothers. Yeah. They're fighting and they're just not coming together. Like I'm reading uh, Tomei's book, and I would definitely suggest it. I have it at my table, the se sequel, Children of Blood and Bone. Yeah. Now, if you look at Avatar, The Last Airbender, yes, I wouldn't consider that Which sword and sorcery. Yeah, I wouldn't consider it sword and sorcery, but it's close, right? Yeah, it's, close. it's very close because the Avatar he messes with four elements. You got water, right. fire, earth, air, and he's learned them in an Asian way, yeah. which is a little bit of having it in you, yeah. but also being able to master. It. Yeah. So there's always an element that you have to master. So there's not quite a sword in there, yeah. 
yeah. is not quite a barbarian, but it works, and the people aren't quite desolate. Yeah. They're remote living, but they are kind of all intelligent, right? Nice. It's not like you're gonna fall. Like Conan, he would go knock on the door, and next thing you know, it's a, wit a witch. Yes. You know, she wants to sleep with him, and she's trying to steal his soul. That's not Avatar: Last Airbender. No. His world is not quite as dangerous, right? Yes. As perilous, mm -hmm. right? So, how do you do that in an African story? Well, many times, like Children of Blood and Bone, there's some type of family. Yes. Dynamic. You know, dynamics that's fallen apart, and you know they're either spooked by some old contemporary, you know, some old legend. We don't mess with those people over there. Yeah. And, then the, and, the, and the hero comes out and be like, why? We, we, we just haven't in years. You know, some, something, some old tradition that's made them ignorant, you know, and they stop them from thinking. But because, look at them. And the people say, yeah, look at it. They don't believe it. And then the hero comes in and the hero says, but they're not ignorant. What they have is a deep intelligence of the earth. And then at the end of the book, you have a big kumbaya moment. Of course. Right. Like so, come together. Right. So that is different than Conan the Barbarian. Because yeah. yeah. we know Conan the Barbarian ends either two ways. Yeah. He kills the wrong person or he kills the right person. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the story, he's killing somebody. Yeah. Of course. That's how the story ends. Like, Somebody's got to die. Yeah, yeah. like he man. But you, if you go back to He-Man... Yep, He-Man is another one. Like, uh, He-Man, what his sword came from? It came from sorcery. That's right. Whoa, because Excalibur. Because, right. yeah, Excalibur. Like Excalibur. But um, he got technology around him. And what time check? Do we have a time check? Uh, yeah, right now it's 2.45. Oh, good. So I got about yeah. five more minutes. So yeah. we're going to wrap it up. So, yeah, you got um, He-Man, but his, his palace, his kingdom... Like, get Grayskull. Right, Grace, right, like Grace, right, right, right. When he lives, like his room is Prince Adam. And he just surrounds by technology and magic. And you see, see, Conan got an uh, empire, but he, his story, he leaves it so much, you don't even remember he ever got one. Yeah, that's right. But if you go to He-Man, he surrounds himself with technology and magic. Because magic and technology are like equals. Mm -hmm. Because um, He-Man's um, worst enemy is Skeletor. Well, Skeletor, he surrounds up a bunch of magic and technology too. Right. But he rides, um, he doesn't ride like, like, uh, say cars. Right. He, he rides like, um, war vehicles or war machines and also beasts. Yes. Right. Flying beasts. Yep. Yeah. And that's a, another thing. I like the flying part. You gotta have it. All right. So, now, we're gonna talk about some of the best stories, right? And what we like about them. What about the best way we like the story told? What medium is best? So we'll say video game. Like narration? No. So we go the medium, right? Video game. Yeah. Book. Yes. Now um Movies. comic book yes. or movie. So out of the four, which one do you like the best? Um Well, I would guess I guess the best place is usually the book first and then it would be all the others. Okay. What about you? Well, I go with him, but book first, I go straight to the video game and straight to the movie. I will say I'm going to go with comic book first. Um, I, I, as much as I like the book versions, there's some stories or genres of stories that I think book isn't the best for it. God bless you. Um, I think like comedy, I love comedy in movies the best, right? Now I might see comedy in comic books, but it isn't as good as when I see on TV. I've never read a comedy novel. I've never, I think that's the hardest thing to write, you know, now if it's joke books, yeah, you know, but the type of things that they do in comedy, I've never seen a comedy video game. I've seen video games with some silly things happen in it, but I never seen So, Sword and Soul, I will say, I think because of the mythology of it, the book brings out that mythology. Right. So like if you read um, Tolkien, right? Tolkien. Lord of the Rings. Tolkien, yeah. Lord, Lord. He's got seven books right. explaining the mythology of the three books, Lord of the Rings. 
those seven books are bigger than the three books. Right. Because it's that much into it. Yeah, it's like in depth. Right. Yeah. So for that, I think it works. You know, does the story actually need all of that? Not necessarily, but the background information is also treats. Because now you want to read up where does that sword come from? Because if you, you know, if they stopped and told you that, that would take up a whole nother story. That's you know? right. <laughs> so you want to do. Um, and then I also think video games are a lot of fun. Right. Or like sword, like my son plays Assassin's Creed, right. and he's playing Assassin's Creed um, on Egypt, yeah. and then the one or that um, in Greece. Right. Holy moly! Just the pictures, and then they, they're fighting. He fights Medusa, and they, yeah. you know, so that that fun that thing is there, and I think also that lends itself to role playing games. Right. I think role playing games are. Phenomenal for right. sword and soul, sword and sorcery, like, like multiplayer. Heck yeah! That you know when you assume a character, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. There's, there's there's no comedy, you know, board game comparable, yeah. right? And I think sword and soul in a comic book, yes, you got the Conan images, but in a board game, you're living it. Right. You are that wizard, of course. Or you you're are. that, or you're that swordsman. Right, so I don't know, I'll, I'll say, and then in the movies, is the best Sword and Soul movie, right? Sword and Sorcery movie. Is that better than playing D&D, right? I don't know, right? By the way, Dungeons and Dragons has been movies as well. Exactly, well, of course, you had that. But then the question is, the comic books can do real good blood. Right. and. Just like I think with science fiction movies, right. old King Kong is nowhere in comparison to modern day CGI King Kong. Yeah. So I think the upgrade, right? Because you look at old Sword and Soul, you're looking at what? Sinbad, yes. you know, and, and stop motion clay yes. That's comical, yeah. right? And then you had what? Uh, Xena the Warrior Princess. Yeah. You know, you can look at it, my son and be like, ah, ah, ah. And he got, you know. They got Spawn. Right. Spawn. But now, when you look at Lord of the Rings, yeah. Lord of the Rings. now, it's like CGI. Now, now you're talking. Now yeah. you're on fire. So I think movies have become more dominant in this genre because of CGI. Right. Whereas before, it was not, it wasn't common. I mean, I like Ray Harryhausen, and that was beautiful, but it wasn't as even as good as the comic books. Yeah, because, you know, it's like more realistic. Like, it's almost like takes you back to what it was. Yes, what you see in your head. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, I just I want to thank you, because we're yeah. probably at time now. Right. Um, I appreciate you guys for partaking in this. Um, this is um, my story. We'll be on Kickstarter, Planet Akibalon. You can look for Jeff Carroll. You can look on Kickstarter for it. Um, it's going to be a comic book. You never know. Maybe it will be a movie someday. Because yeah. <laughs> I think budget is also a factor in why we don't see a lot of diversity on the big screen. Right. Um, um, and, you know, because we didn't see it in the big screen, we probably haven't read that much of it. But I think if we start to see it, if they make, you know, a barbarian story, a, a black sword and soul story, Man, you'll see the comic books light up. You'll see the yeah. You'll see like novels. profit. Man. Yeah, a lot of people are on doing it. So right now, I think you got to look for it. There are a bunch of books like it. My comic book is out there. There's more coming. We're just on the verge of it right now. It's an emerging subgenre, and I guarantee you, you'll love it as much as you love, and probably even more. You'll probably see a Black Panther right. in the genre where. People be like, oh my God, you know, look at the warriors. Look at their costume. I want to live in that world. Remember how we felt about Wakanda? Yeah. Oh my God, people were dressing like the characters. Yeah. So if we see a Sword and Soul movie done right, yeah. it may have that same effect. Nice idea. Well, thank you very much, Great guys. Lot. Great, great oh, wow. right. yeah. Excellent. All right, let me tap out. Let me tap out. <laughs>